Good morning and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going down six ways people are making millions in WoW. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Today we are going to be going down the six ways people are making millions and this is done by the community. I asked my community on Discord which are the best ways that you are making millions at the moment and these are the ones that of note that came up the most frequently so hence why we're going to be covering today in this video. Coming in at number one is alchemy. Now alchemy is a great way in order to make gold and more along the lines of printing gold and the things of note that were stated by the community was flasks and potions, definitely a must when it comes towards gold making with alchemy. It's always been a staple moving forward and when it comes to alchemy in BFA at this moment in time, and definitely when you are making gold with alchemy in BFA, you want to be doubling down and getting hold of the Silas Sphere of Transmutation Prosperity Proc. This is so you can get more flasks and potions. They have to be rank three, however, but once you have that, you can make more gold by printing more potions from that. It's basically like the Transmutation Master and the, Fla and the Potions Master traits, but it's an actual item that you have to get a hold of. It really doesn't take you all that long, it probably takes you about an hour or two to get a hold of all of the materials for it, but, but for the return on your time invested in order to get a hold of it, it's definitely well worth your time because you can pretty much make a hefty amount of gold at the moment. Because herb prices have actually plummeted a bit, that means that you can buy up cheap mats in order to craft your potions and flasks which you can then sell on the auction house for even more gold at the moment. Now I've noticed on my TSM that a lot of the stuff that weren't profitable to actually craft are now profitable and this is because of the influx of herbs that are coming on the auction house at this moment in time. This is pretty damn awesome in order to make gold just on raid night specifics and if you go over to my discord at this moment in time I do have an updated version of all of my TSM strings which you then can use for your Silas proc and then getting a hold of more and more stuff. Just one key note when it comes to alchemy you definitely have to have rank 3 and you should have your Silas Sphere. And along with this, following on to alchemy, a lot of people have been making a lot of gold with the Vial of the Sands. Now, bear in mind, getting a hold of the recipe is going to take you a long time, but it is well worth it in the long run if you get a hold of that recipe by crafting the Vial of the Sands mount. Now this is because it is a very well adept mount that is always in demand and also along with that it's worth a great deal of gold even if you farm to craft it or you just craft it from stuff from the auction house as the sell for it is relatively high so you're, relative, so you're pretty much going to sell it pretty damn fast in the grand scheme of mount selling and along with this the Vial of the Sands sells for a hefty amount of gold when it comes towards making different types of gold. Now, now however you will need to have reputation with the Aldum Accord which is the BFA reputation if you want to reduce the cost however. If you actually get your rep up with the Aldum Accord it actually reduces the gold for the initial investment. I think it's like 29,000 gold in order to get the base mats from the Oasis if you wanted to craft the Vial of the Sands and with your Alder McCord rep it actually decreases the cost of the Vial of the Sands mount in order to craft and a decrease in the baseline investment is amazing because that means you can craft the mount for cheaper and be a bit more aggressive when selling it on the auction house. So it's definitely something you should look into overall. Now coming in at number two is inscription. Now inscription's always been a staple of mine. I love inscription, it's a great way in order to make gold. And the things of note from there still is glyphs. You need to pretty much have every single glyph you can bloody well craft and you need to learn pretty much all of the glyphs. If you need, you need to have a wide variety of glyphs when you are getting into the glyph market. You can't just have just a few, you have to have a hell of a lot. That is because glyph selling is very specific and pretty much you're gonna need a load of these. My tend to method to actually sell these on the auction house is by using those glyphs by 
crafting as many glyphs as I can for a cheap enough cost. This could be using Dreamleaf, milling that, and getting hold of roseate pigments, and then taking that over to the, the ink trader in order to reduce the cost of all the other glyph prices when actually sourcing my inks, as you can usually get roseate pigments for a lot cheaper, and then you buy all of the old world ones from the ink trader, so you don't have to go through all that jargon of milling all of the old herbs, you can just use the roseate pigments, which is definitely a, a very good way in order to maximize the amount of gold when it comes towards your glyph selling. Now, aside from all of this, the other things of note when it comes to inscription is tomes. Now, tomes of the quiet mind and tomes of the tranquil mind sell relatively fast, and they usually have a very good price point when it comes towards profit, when it comes to your gold making. This is definitely something you should definitely double down on, and this should definitely be a staple of your crafting daily. Um, when it comes towards your glyph making, it's definitely daily as well. When it comes to inscription just overall, you have to keep your restocks every single day. But if you can keep on top of it, it usually takes you about 5-10 minutes a day for great investment to returns. And overall, I find this to be a very good way in order to make gold. But alas, inscription has one other thing that I would recommend, and that is Vantis runes. Vantis runes for Nihilotha and also for the Eternal Palace are definitely a must still. Until Shadowlands comes out, these are going to be still in demand for these raids. This is because they're currently being raided quite a lot still, and I, that means that those Vantis runes are going to sell pretty damn sharpish. So I would highly recommend getting at least rank two in those Vantis runes, and also if you can get rank three, you'll be making more profit overall. Aside from this, when it comes to inscription, you can also increase the amount of gold by doing mass milling. Now this can be done either through my add-on worth it, or you can always get on top of it by just working out which ones are best for you. Now obviously, the dream leaf is usually a good safe bet, as you can pretty much either farm it up or you can buy it off the auction house and mass mill that and then open up all of the nightmare pods that come with it and sell the inks or you can also use those roseate pigments in order to go to the ink trader once again and sell all of the old world inks on the auction house as some people are lazy and they will just buy the old world inks for a higher cost because they don't know any better so you may want to take advantage of that when it comes towards all of that stuff. Now, aside from this, BFA inks do take a while to craft, but definitely well worth it. Xenanthid milling for maroon ink is still in high demand. You could probably craft quite a lot of maroon ink and sell it for a profit, which is still pretty damn awesome when it comes to inscription. And overall, inscription is definitely one of a must and something I can actually say, yes, you should be doing inscription on the daily because it provides you with so much gold. Now coming in number three is a non-specific profession thing as it's gonna be a wide variety of professions and that is crafted mounts. Now crafted mounts overall provide you with a lot of amount of gold and is something that pretty much anyone can do. That it's got a very low barrier to entry. You just need, a, you, all you need is around about 50K. Um, I know that sounds like a lot, but if you do like two hours worth of Xenanthid farming, you will have your 50K to invest into mounts. And the things of note is the Vial of the Sands. Once again, if you have the recipe, Vial of the Sands is definitely a key item. You also have some lower ones, which are the engineering ones, and that could be the depleted Kyperium rocket, the world spinner, the turbocharged flying machine, the flying machine. These types of mounts are very easy to craft, as well as crafting the Mecha Mogul as well, if you actually have that recipe as well as that. Now those ones are pretty damn good and engineering is pretty much a, is pretty much the, the ideal profession when you want to get into crafted mounts because you can have the mechanist chopper as well and overall if you wanted to get into mount crafting definitely engineering uh, and then we would get into dual crafting which is the panther mounts. Now panther mounts there are five of them which is the ruby, sapphire, sunstone and jade. You have those ones, and along with that you also have the Onyx Panther, which is the epic version of those. And that is by using all four of those and then crafting it into the Onyx Panther. Now overall, Panther selling is usually on a decline on most servers, but sometimes it's quite profitable depending on how about you go about doing that. Now I did do a video a while back on 
on panther mounts in general and basically if you just type into YouTube Dalla GG dual crafting panther mounts uh, you will find the video. I've done quite a lot of videos on how to reduce the cost when it comes towards crafting panther mounts and how to maximize your gold with them and how it all breaks down into a farm to craft method as well. Now personally I like the method for crafting mounts as farm to craft so I know that my materials that are coming in are always going to be profit but some of you may want to buy that off the auction house so you may want to take this into consideration when you want to pick a profession. Definitely not dual crafting if you're going to buy them off the auction house as usually, usually it is at a loss. But when it comes towards engineering, definitely something you can buy off the auction house and craft a load of mounts with. Just bear in mind that the BC mounts may not be selling for as much as you would think, or may not sell as frequently as you would think also. Now when it comes to blacksmithing, you also have the steel bound harness, which comes from Tychondrius in the Nighthold raid. Now obviously, now we're like 120, we are able to kill Tychondrius pretty damn easy, and you can do this on normal, on normal difficulty on 10 man, and it still has the same amount of drop chance for that pattern if you are a blacksmith. Just make sure you are a blacksmith when you're actually doing it, otherwise it won't drop for you. And if you can get hold of the steel bound harness, it's pretty damn easy to get a hold of a load of Bloods of Sargeras with all when it comes towards gathering professions as well. So if you have blacksmithing, you could have mining as well with that. So if you've paired that with blacksmithing and mining, go do some mining at rank three and get hold of a load of Bloods of Sargeras. So then you can actually have the materials in order to craft it and you'll have your Bloods of Sargeras to do that. Or you can also do invasions to get hold of Bloods of Sargeras as well. And you can also farm it up with Boon of the Blood Hunter from the Wardens. This is a easy mount in order to craft and is very easy to actually just craft in general and produce a lot of gold with and something I have been working towards getting up and going. Now aside from that, let's get into the next crafted mount which is tailoring. Tailoring is pretty damn easy to actually get hold of. Uh, there is only one mount that is worth it and that is the flying carpet. It is usually produced at about 100 gold on average. I will say on average because some servers do fluctuate in price depending on what their materials are. This is a BC mount of course and along with this, this flying carpet actually can be produced for a hell of a lot of profit if you are able to sell this on the auction house. Now, when I craft them, I usually can sell about two or three a day. That's pretty damn awesome. But remember, I can make them for about 100 gold and sell them for about 2,000 gold. So it's not a super massive return. It's a nice little trickle. So it's something you want to do as well as your standardized farming or crafting in general when it comes towards your tailoring. Now that being the case, let's move into number four, which is rank three uncanny gear. Now the uncanny gear that I would highly recommend starting to craft is the uncanny rank three blacksmithing, leatherworking and tailoring. Basing anything for alts at eye level 400, craft it. If it's at a profit, you must craft it and start selling that on the auction house. This is definitely something I would highly recommend as a lot of people are getting alts, a lot of alts at the moment. And this is something to bear in mind as not a lot of people really want to just go and farm, 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 farm loads of gear. They just want to get them sorted for Shadowlands. So they will just buy a load of 400 eye level gear, shove it on their character and they're good to go. That means that Uncanny Gear is in the rise at the moment and it's usually anywhere from around about 1,000 to 5,000 gold profit when it comes to crafting your rank three Uncanny Gear. Now, aside from this, if you wanted to learn any of these, you will need Marks of Honor. The, the fastest way I've found to actually get a lot of Marks of Honor is by doing the mass battlegrounds, so random battlegrounds. I found them to be easy to get a hold of my Marks of Honor when wanting to get hold of all of my recipe stuff. Another thing of note when it comes to un uncanny gear is crafting the weapons with blacksmithing. They seem to be selling faster than the actual gear. So that's something you may want to bear in mind when moving forward with your uncanny stuff. Well, coming in at number five is two times four farming. And I can attest to this. Uh, two times four farming is definitely something if you want to make a lot of gold, 
it, two times four farming is definitely something you need to get onto because two times four farming is for majority of the time it's for high-end mounts that sell from anywhere from a hundred thousand gold to two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand gold um, the only problem with these ones are you are in a group and it's not a solo farm uh, the only and the other thing is that you may not get it in the first hour. You need to actually put in uh, more than an hour's worth of farming for these mounts to drop. That's the only trade-off. You may do an hour or two and not get anything, but on the third hour you'll probably get something. Usually within two to three hours you will get one of those mounts, and it usually averages from anywhere from around about 70,000 gold for that hour if you broke it up into the time you've invested in so it's still a very nice return it just seems a little bit daunting when you after an hour you haven't got anything that's worth an awful lot and you feel like you've wasted an hour just so you know two times four farming does pay off for people who per persevere when it comes to it so keep at it if you want to get into two times four farming you will get those high-end mounts for that huge amount of gold at this moment in time the golden mane reigns the dune scavenger and the terrified pack mill are the best ones to actually farm up with two times four and that is because they can pretty much pay for your subscription for the month uh, out of just investing like a few hours. This is definitely worth your time to invest if you wanted to just pay for a token for the month um, for a, just a few hours invested. So then you can press around and do something else. Just do a two times four, like once a month for three, four hours until you get that amount. Really not that hard in order to pay for your token. Now another thing for two times four farming is mats. Now this could be done with volatile water farming and volatile fire. These ones seem to be the ones that are the most popular and they do seem to be the ones that are the most effective for increasing the amount of gold per hour. Because with two times four farming, you do increase the gold per hour for standardized um, material farms. And that means that you're gonna be making more gold overall than you would doing a solo farm. Coming in last on our list at number six is raw gold farming. Now, raw gold farming is definitely a niche subject and it's basically, you put in the time, you get this raw gold in your bags. There's no auction house, it's just literally running something selling it to the vendor and you've got that gold. So it says considerably a lot less for the time invested and uh, if you were to sell it on the auction house. So bear that one in mind before you do raw gold farming. On the lines of a supplementary method, then as opposed to a full blown gold farming session. Obviously you can do it if you have a load of alts, but if you have like one character, roughly around about 11,000 gold on all difficulties for Hellfire Citadel, for instance. Um, so that would be LFR, that would be normal, mythic and heroic. The time scaling obviously will take you a lot longer than what you would think, um, and but the, at the end of the day you will have that raw gold in your bags. The things of note that you would want to do when it comes to raw gold farming is the LFR WAD raids along with the normal, mythic and heroic and also your mop raids, which can be found in the Veil of Eternal Blossom, and also Skyreach for that hourly dungeon farming. Now Skyreach obviously is definitely a really good raw gold farm as it's around about 4,000 gold per hour, and it doesn't take you all that long to actually farm this up. So you can do some other things while waiting for that instance lockout to go down. So you could also pair this with a bit of material farming, so you've got raw gold regardless and then you've got materials so that is something you can do also when it comes towards your gold farming overall that is six ways people are making millions at the moment and this is done by my community discord and if you wanted to talk any more about that please jump over to the discord for a nice discussion now aside from all of this have an awesome rest of the day and i shall see you in the next video which will be tomorrow